name's Tessa and I'm a short course trainer at the National Institute of Circus Arts. So some of the classes I usually teach are aerial preparation and aerial hoop. And today we're going to be focusing on a simple set of exercises that can increase your aerial strength. Um, and you can do these just at home without any aerial equipment, which is handy. Um, so these things will range from being able to invert or go upside down um, to increasing your grip strength. As we all know, that's really important when doing aerials. Um, before we start, let's make sure the area we're working in is safe. So you want about three meters by three meters of cleared area, not too close to the telly or windows. Um, you will also want a match and a water bottle. Um, we're gonna start with a quick warm up and then move on to our exercises. Let's get started. Okay, so let's start with a quick warm up. The classic, let's start jogging on the spot. I think I'm making this squeaky spot on the floor even more squeaking every time we do a warm up. And star jumps! And then jump from one side, let's jump to the other side. One side, other side. Excellent for ankle strength and stability. So if you've got dodgy ankles, this one's a good one to do. If you're not worried about rolling them. You can go slightly forwards when you jump, slightly backwards when you jump, side to side. Mix it up, make it more difficult. Should burn the legs a bit as well because your knees should be bent. Huh. Okay, head jogging again. And kicking your bottom. Okay, let's do our wrists a bit. So on all fours and pushing up and down. These are called wrist push-ups and they're really great for wrist strength. And just warming up your wrists in general. When I did handstands every day, this was essential so as not to get sore wrists. Now I'm putting hands out to the side. Okay, we don't need to do a huge warm up because showing you the exercises that, um, yeah, they've got five exercises that basically would are really great for if you want to strengthen the muscles similar to doing aerials because obviously it's a bit difficult to get up in the air unless you've got an aerial rig set up at home. Um, which most of us don't. So this is the next best thing. Okay, so I'm gonna go through five different exercises with you today that are really great um, and use very similar muscles. So the first one is to help with inversions or going upside down. A lot of people struggle to lift their bottom up when they go up, um, so this will really help with that and being able to control it. Um, Hanging by your knees, so maybe if you're on a trapeze bar or an aerial ring bar or something like that. Um, being able to keep your ankles down so they don't flip off, so you can just hang there. This will help strengthen those muscles. Um, to be able to sit up onto things, so whether you're hanging upside down on a tissue and have to reach up, hanging by your knees and have to reach up on a bar, all that sort of thing, that will help with your core. Um, lines so you want to have beautiful lines in the air so nothing more ugly than doing routines with your legs like this you want to have straight legs pointed toes um like i always say if you're one of my students um doesn't matter if you're doing the most difficult moves i don't think if your lines look like this it just looks sloppy you could do much more simple things and have beautiful legs like that um 
and it just makes it much more impressive to watch. So yeah, lines, very important. And then lastly, grip strength, because that's one that lots of people forget about, and um, obviously you have to hang there, and you need the strength for that. So I'll give you a couple of tips that I've used to help with that. Cool, so first one, inversions. So whether you want to hold onto something or whether you can do it on your own, I'm gonna do it on my own to start off with, see how you go. Um, these really help strengthen the core, um, the same muscles that you use to go up in the air, okay? So, hands down here. You can have your hands up here for uh, to make it more difficult. And you push all the way up. You want to try and lift up as high as you can, straighten your legs, and you want to slowly, 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 slowly start to roll down to the ground. So you want to try and roll down your spine as slowly as you can, okay? So, got you. So you want to try and push up, push up, push up, and slowly roll down your spine. Don't let your bottom just drop down. Slowly roll down. And all the way down, slowly bring your legs down towards the ground. Okay, then you can slowly go back up. And that uses all the muscles. And back down again. Slowly, slowly, slowly. So, this way we're actually going with gravity to make it a bit easier to go down. So often when you're struggling with a move, it's easier to go with gravity than going against gravity. So rather than, if you're struggling to get your bum up in the air, it's easy to go bring your bum slowly down rather than trying to lift up because you don't have, you're not fighting gravity, if that makes sense. So that's what this one is doing. If you're really struggling, you can do something like hold onto the back of a chair or something to help lift you up and then you can slowly lower down that way, holding onto something like that. But if you can, try and not use something to hold on to. If you're feeling really fab, I'm not sure how fab I'm feeling, you bring your arms up above your head like this, and then slowly lower down that way. Oh, see, I lost a little bit of my control. If you're feeling really good, keep your legs straight, all the way down, and straight, all the way up, okay? So that's the hardest version. Maybe do, I don't know, two lots of five of those, but it depends how you feel. If you feel really good after that, three lots of five. Um, you can also put weights on your ankles to make it more difficult, things like that. But that one, really good to strengthen all your tummy muscles to help your bum get up and under that bar. Next one, for hanging by your knees. So this one, you really need to strengthen hamstrings, okay? So, hamstrings, you can do by doing the classic glute bridge, except we're going to bring our feet further away to target the hamstrings. So, if you want to target glutes, you bring your heels in as close as you can and lift up. If you want to target your hamstrings, bring your feet further away. Still don't want to have the weight in your toes, you want to have the weight going through your heels. Lifting up, and then slowly lowering down. Okay, so lifting up, squeezing your bottom, slowly lowering down. If you want to make that more difficult, lifting up and doing little pulses. Squeezing your bum and letting it relax. Okay, and lowering down. And lifting up and maybe you do five pulses. One, two, three, four, five, and slowly lowering down. You want to maybe do that again, two lots of five, if you want to progress that, make it more difficult, you can either have a weight on your hips or you could do it with a chair like this, put your feet up on the chair and lifting up that way. That will increase the difficulty of it. Um, you really want to feel the burn in the backs of your legs here, okay? Um, yeah. So that one's to do things like yeah, hanging upside down. Um, it just, by using those hamstrings, it just it allows you to keep your heels to your bottom without flicking them off. Um, and it's good for endurance. So if you want, like when we're actually doing aerials, a really good exercise is just trying to hold your knee hang or single knee hang 
for a certain period of time, maybe half a minute, maybe 20 seconds, maybe a minute. It depends where you're at. So if you want to do that, you could try and recreate that by doing the, the hamstring bridge or the glute bridge, maybe with your feet up on there and then holding it for time and seeing how you go. So that would really help there with your endurance rather than, oh, it does strength as well, but if you're holding it for a longer period, then it will help your endurance. Um, next one, so being able to sit up. So whether you are hanging by foot lock on tissue and then you've got to lift all the way up to try and reach your hands up above your feet or whether you are hanging upside down by your knees and you've got to reach up to the bar hanging by an aerial ring. Um, this one is good for that because I would imagine there's a few of us who are feeling like our core is not quite as good as maybe it was. So, lying down, feet up in the air, nice straight knees, nice pointed toes, and then you're going to be reaching up towards your toes. Do you see how this action mimics going up this way? So you want to do maybe 20 of these. But again, depends how you are feeling. If you're feeling fab, do more. But you probably don't want to go past 30. I mean, there's only so much you can do with this. You can just move on to a different ab exercise if you really felt good afterwards. This you can just use in conjunction with other ab exercises. Like if you're doing abs, just in general different uh, exercises. Um, if you... Yeah, added this one in, that would really help that. Then what you can also do is bum lifts. So when you do a bum lift, you want to try and lift your foot straight up in the air rather than doing that, bringing your feet towards your head. Okay, you want to try and lift it just straight up. And that will use um, your lower abdominals, um, which is what you need to be able to tilt your pelvis to um, both go under the bar and also to be able to lift up into a sit-up. Um, so all of these, I guess, you could do all, of, if you wanted to do this as a circuit, you could do all of them, um, you know, five, whatever I've been saying, so five times, 15 times, 20 times, and then do three rounds of them. By the time you do three rounds, then your muscles do start to fatigue and you'll start to um, overload them, put stress on them, and hopefully they'll get stronger quicker. So roughly three rounds would be good. Next one is lines. So that's really important for air, basically all circus for lines. Um, so I like doing, you do it in straddle and um, in L sit. So I'm gonna start with a straddle. So straight knees, flexing your feet up, then what you're going to do, sitting up nice and tall, you don't want to be doing these ones. If you're doing these ones, bring your feet further together so you can sit up tall, okay? So, it's not about how wide your straddle is in this one. Straighten your knees, flexing your feet. Then what you're going to do, you're going to keep your toes up in the air, bring the balls of your feet towards the ground, toes are staying up. So that's number one. Number two, point your toes down towards the ground. Three, toes up towards the sky. Four, flex your feet. This starts to work the muscles in your feet, okay? And gets your body used to having um, straight knees on the ground so that when you're in the air, you don't have to think about it as much, okay? So let's go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, Four. One, two, three, four. And then to finish off, you can also just kind of like move through the um, movements. You don't have to hold them solidly. So you could do the rigid structure and then flow through them. And you can also do opposite ways. So you go down and then bring your toes up and kind of claw them just to really articulate your feet. And then to finish off on, I like to hold it for 30 seconds. So squeezing your knees, try and externally rotate your legs, point your toes all the way, energy going all the way to the tip of your toes, sitting up nice and tall and holding. So you want to try and squeeze as hard as you can, really point those toes, really 
rotate the legs outwards so you don't want to roll in like that. Rotate out. Turns on the glutes, sitting up nice and tall. And breathe. Keep squeezing. If you get cramps, excellent. Means you're working hard. It's quite common to get cramps, especially if you're not used to doing it. Keep squeezing. Okay, and five, four, three, two, one. And relax. Excellent. And then you can do that again in, um, what's this, pike. So, you know, flex toes. One, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then maybe you want to roll through it. You can also do this with a TheraBand. You can have a band wrapped around either individual foots or both feet. And it will help strengthen your feet as well. There we go. And then you would hold it. Squeezing your knees, pointing your toes. And holding. Okay. So, those ones are really good for lines. The last thing that I'll talk to you about, I guess, is grip strength. So it's hard to get grip strength without um, hanging from a bar or something or hanging from tissue. Um, but what you can do is there's a few things you can do. Um, is if you have like a stress ball or a squeezy ball, if you're just sitting watching the telly, if you can squeeze those balls or even a ball of socks. I often used a ball of socks because I didn't have a stress ball or a squeezy ball. And right now all the shops are closed, so don't worry about going out and buying one if you don't have one. Just get a pair of socks and just squeeze it while you're um, watching the telly or something or sitting at your desk. But that will help strengthen all the muscles in your forearm, which is what we need for grip strength. You can also do things like rolling up a towel. Do I have a towel here? No, I've got a blanket though. what you can do, you can go out and then you've got to roll it up like this and you roll it all the way up like that and then you start to unroll it like that. And then you do it again and roll all the way up and all the way back down. And that's another way to get good grip strength. So there you go. There are a few key exercises that you can do if you're worried. Um, that you're losing some of that fitness. Although, to be honest, once you get back in there, you if you work really hard, you'll be bounced straight back to where you were in no time. Um, but this can be just a few exercises to help you along the way so you don't go into as much shock when you get back into classes. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.